Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you about optimizing your pandas queries using method chaining. So we're going to look at one of my favorite data sets, which is parking tickets from New York City from the year 2020. I'm going to say import pandas as PD, as we always do. And if I look now at, let's load it up. So I'm going to say df equals PD read CSV of file name. And because I know this is a really big file, I'm going to say engine equals pi arrow. Pi arrow is a little um, sort of more persnickety about CSV files that it loads, but it's much, much, much faster. And in this case, I know that it'll actually run. It only takes a few seconds. Really using Pi arrow as your loading engine usually doesn't cause any trouble. And it often, very, very often is much faster than we would get with regular old pandas. Uh, loading. And if I ask now, what is the shape of this? We see it's about 12 million rows and 43 columns. Okay, a medium sized data set, let's say. So now if we look at head here, we're going to see that we have now for every single parking ticket issued in the year 2020, we have one row. And what's the ticket number, the summons number, the license plate ID, registration state, plate type, violation code, body type, vehicle make, and vehicle color. Now, there are a lot of opportunities to clean this data up. For example, BK, BLK, and black, those are all three ways to say black. And unfortunately, this data set, or maybe fortunately for pedagogical purposes, this data set has lots and lots of opportunities to clean it up. So let's say I want to find cars from New York, and I want to find red cars, and I want to find also Toyotas. So how can I do that? Well, actually, it's not that hard. I can say here df, and then I'll use lock and lambda, which is a pretty standard thing to do when you're doing method chaining in Python. Notice that I'm opening with parentheses and closing with them as well. That basically tricks Python into thinking that we have one really, really long line, even though we've divided it across lines. And I can say lock and lambda, which lets me set up what the comparison is that I want, only keeping rows that uh, for which the comparison returns true. So we'll say df underscore of, and we'll say here registration state equals equals ny. Okay, and then I'm going to do two more lock lines. So the first one is going to be here, vehicle color. We'll say that's going to be red, it's all in caps. And then we'll say here, vehicle make, and that's going to be the well-known brand Toyota. Why Toyota? What happened to the last A? They only uh, have five characters there. What can I say? So we are now going to find, we're going to get a data frame back from this query. And that data frame is going to contain only rows in which the car is from New York and is a red Toyota. So if I run this, it'll take a little while to run, right? It takes a few seconds to run and we get back a new data frame. And that contains, let's see, 4,033 rows. Okay, out of our larger data set, this is a much smaller number. My question is, how long did this take to run? And it, since I'm running in Jupyter, I can find out pretty easily. I can just say percent percent time it. And this will run our query a few times, usually seven times if it's a very long query. Sometimes if it's really long, it'll just do it once. And it'll give us the mean query time and the standard deviation. So how much variation there was across uh, the queries. And we will find out, just a moment hopefully, how long this took. And um, remember, it has to do all three of these. And each lock and lambda is working on the data frame that it got from the line before. So the first line here is working on df. The second line is working on the output from the first lock and lambda. And the third line is working on the output from the second lock and lambda. And we see that on average, it took about three and a half seconds to run this query, plus or minus 19.4 milliseconds per loop. Okay, that happens, right? Big data set, big query, it can take a while. The thing is, Think about what I just told you, that each lock and lambda is working on the previous line's output. So what if I were to move these around? What if I were to do registration state equals equals New York at the bottom? Why would I do that? Because this is a database of New York City traffic tickets, parking tickets, I should say. And those parking tickets, well, who are they going to go to most of the time? Residents of New York, people with New York plates. So actually that the majority or at least the plurality of plates are going to be from new york we're not going to cut down our data frame very much and then the second two queries for color and make are just they're going to deal with a lot of the data set so what we can do is ask for vehicle color equals red or vehicle make to be the first and second of our queries and if i time this now i'm going to get exactly the same 
results, but I'm getting at them much, much faster. Right? 598 milliseconds versus three and a half seconds. Right? That's something like, was that six times faster? just because I changed the order. Because first we're knocking out a lot of rows, then we're knocking out even more rows, and when it finally comes down to the looking for New York, yeah, a lot of them will stick around. Not all of them, but a lot of them. What if I were to switch around the first two lines now for Toyota and Red? That's gonna be something similar, also much faster than we got before. All right, and so we'll see what time it tells us here. Remember that percent percent time it is different from the single percent time it. The double works on an entire cell and the single works on a single line. Here we see 924 milliseconds. So actually, because of the number of Toyotas versus the number of red cars, we can see then that it's best for us to slice out the red cars first. Okay, so the order in which you do your query and that you get rid of rows that are not of interest to you can have a huge impact on the speed of your query and what happens with it. All right, so method chaining, a great technique to use. Lock and lambda, also a great technique to use. But check what you're doing, check the timing, consider how many rows have the values that you are looking for before you just sort of put lock and lambda in any old order and hope for the best. I hope this was useful and interesting. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know what else you wanna learn about and I'll be back soon, really soon, with lots more about Python and pandas and everything in between. See you then.